we have everyone kind of pause and take a look up here, right? So we've done we've gone over the basics, right? We've gone over um, how to kind of put footage in, no audio. You time the cuts to the music. That's great. So what happens when you actually want to time something in the scene to music? That gets a little trickier. So I'm going to show you some tools, and then I want you to kind of add a few transitions, um, just so you know how to do them. And then you're going to learn how to make and modify text, and you're actually going to identify the shots. And because um, I'm extending the deadline a little bit, we're going to I'm going to show you how to do speed changes right away. Speed changes is easy. Let's do that one first. All right. So let's go back to my Premiere, and here's my thing. One more thing I see a lot of you guys, it, it pains me because I'm an old person. You guys are operating with a really, really tiny track. If you grab these lines here, you can kind of make your clips bigger and I can make my audio bigger. Um, and that really helps me out. And then I like to kind of stretch things out. I can press that the button right above enter, the forward tab or the forward slash, excuse me, didn't mean to put space. Um, the slash button right above enter uh, resizes your, your, your scene. So it's, it's nice to have them nice and big. I'm going to make mine even bigger um, so you guys can see them at all. All right. I have less screen real estate than you guys do. So here's what I got so far. It's not completely done, just like some of you. That's okay. But there's some timing. Not everything's timed. And this is what I'm going to work on. Trying to time that to like the quick change. All right, so anyway, the one I wanted to work on with you guys is this one. So right when the door is opening, there's a nice little like wang, guitar wang going with it. See, he's opening it a little too early for the guitar. So you can fine tune that, okay? So um, let's do this right now. Take, take a minute, find a clip where there's some action that you can manipulate to kind of get closer to the music. So just try to find that clip you want to work with. Just take about a minute right now. Any clip will do. Right? It could be subtle pieces of action. It doesn't have to be anything. He's opening a door. It's nothing huge. Right? Like it could be like when the bike appears on the screen. Right? You can time it so where the bike is appearing on the screen or whatever it is. Sorry. Okay. Everyone find a piece? No? Time with it. If you're not sure, just watch. Okay? So if you haven't found a piece yet, just kind of watch. Okay, first thing you do is you found the piece, you might want to zoom in on it. You can either do that by grabbing the edges down here, or I can hit Z for zoom, or I can go to my little zoom tool right here, and I can click in. And it zooms in. If I want to click out, I can hold the Alt key, the Alt Option key, and I can zoom out. So I just want to make it a little bit bigger so I can really focus in on this thing, right? Once you hit a tool, though, remember to always go back to arrow, right? Or press V, either way. Now, I've selected my clip here. And I'm just kind of going to scrub through. And guess what I can do? Right when it's opening, I could mark it. How do I mark things? M. So I'm marking the video. The video this time, not the audio. That's where the action is about to take place. Okay? And then the song, just to double check that that mark's okay. Let's see, is that... It's a little early, so I'm going to change it. So there's a short way and a long way to do this adjustment. I basically want... Right there. Right, right there is where I want that door to open. So that mark is the door. My scrubber, this mark was a little off. My scrubber is where the, the guitar kicks in, right? So I can do a couple things. Here's the long way. With my arrow, I just pull it up to a track, slide it over, slide it over a little bit more, slide it over until they're matched up. Mm, there you go. How does it look now? Maybe a little bit more to the left, right? Yeah. Yeah. There you go. So now the door is timed to that guitar. 
Let's see. Nice. Okay. Now what I can do to get this to fit back in is I have to pull this out wider and then go over here and pull this in shorter and I can tuck it back in. That's the, the long way. Is there a shorter way? You betcha. It's another tool. So that's the long way if you forget the tool, but there's a tool here called the slip tool. And I actually really like this tool so much that I'm showing it to you right away. The slip tool, if I click on it, if I click on any clip, what it does is it keeps the in and the out point, right? So it's gonna keep the clip the exact same length in the exact same spot, but it lets me change the start and the end, right? So when I click and hold it, it shows me on the left side, it's the first frame. On the right side, it's the last frame. And it helps me match up that action. That's called the slip tool or, or Y. Why isn't it S? I don't know, but it's Y. So um, it's really handy to kind of help time things out. You don't even need to mark things. You can kind of just experiment, right? Like a little bit later, it kind of gets a little, when I get to my fast part, like that little footstep right there, right? And this is what editors start to look for. They look for little things, like his, his foot should go right on that little bass drum, right? It kind of does, does it? All right, all right, we'll just skip that one. All right, but right here, like, th that zoom, one of these has a zoom on it. That little thing is too short, right? So I can fix this, there's too much camera movement in the shot, so I can choose a different piece of that shot just to kind of fit in better, because that movement, there we go, right? The camera was doing a whip zoom or a whip pan. Uh, it was too much for that short little period, right? So the slip tool's tremendously handy, okay? So one thing I want you to try once I let you go again is to try and match action to the song, okay? Let me show you the two other things. Sarah, what were you trying to figure out earlier? Fading audio in and out. Now there's the long hard way, or the, the, the more complicated way, which I'm gonna show you, but I'm gonna show you also the easy way too. So to mess around with your audio levels or to fade it in or fade it out, like let's say my, my, let's say my movie's done, right? Let's go like that. And I wanna fade out my audio instead of have it just abruptly stop. Like right now it's just gonna stop. Right, it stops. So if I wanted to fade that out, oops, stop. Right in the middle of my audio track, there's a white line. It's actually hard to see. Again, I go to a different tool. I go to my pen tool, and I'm going to just draw two dots. One dot here, two dots here. These are what they call keyframes or key points now. And I can pull one of these dots down, and that represents the volume. So now, Gonna slowly fade out. I can do the opposite too. I can make I can make a piece of the song swell. So I've made three dots here, and now it's gonna get really loud. Plug your ears. It gets it louder or quieter. Okay, that's the the harder way right now. If you're like I don't want to learn another tool, Mr. G, you're driving me crazy with all these tools. That's fine. Just undo a few things here. Everyone knows Command Z undoes something. So if you made a mistake, hit Command Z. Okay, so the easy way to fade things in and out is to right click on the edge of your clip. Right click, everyone try this at the end of your song. Go to the end of your song right now. Right click and say apply default transition. It, it makes a little gray box right there. And that gray box is a cross dissolve which if it has nothing to dissolve to, it fades it out like that. If I do it on a video clip, now go to the last clip in your scene. Go to the last clip of your scene, right click and choose apply default transition. Now it fades out. So instead of it just ending abruptly, it slowly fades to black instead of just cutting to black. Do you want it to last longer? If you want it to last longer, you select it, right click or double click, and you can change the duration. Everyone look up here. This is actually really important because um, we're gonna be talking about this in a, for a lot. So if, if you're not there to make a transition, 
grab the edge of any clip, right click, and choose apply default transition. The default transition is cross dissolve. But let's say that lasts a second. Let's say we want it to last like five seconds. Double click on cross dissolve, and this is the important part. Whether or not you want it to last five seconds, I want you all to understand this. This is my time code. One, this number that right here in the middle, that is seconds. The number to the right of that is frames. So a lot of people have the assumption that this is seconds. That's not true, right? So this is frames. Your camera, I believe, shot in 60 frames per second unless you change the settings. So if you wanted a half a second, you would type in three zero and that would make it, let's see, did it shoot? Did we shoot in, nope, we shot in 30 frames per second. So if I wanted to make it a half second, I'm gonna do 15, right? And that made it, oops, what did I do there? Oh, 221, no, 15, there you go. So now I got it shorter. So um, it's not a decimal place, it's frames. And sometimes you shoot in 24 frames per second, sometimes you shoot in 60 frames per second. So you have to be aware of that. Or if I wanted it to be five seconds long, I'm gonna change this number here to five. So, or I can just type in five, zero, zero, five seconds, zero frames. So now I have this really, really long fade out. And that's the easy way to do a fade out. It's a really, really, really slow fade to black, right? Um, you can do this in the middle of shots. So instead of doing a jump cut, like that, I could do a right click, apply default transition, and now I have a cross dissolve. All right, do I wanna make it longer? Double click on it and do like five zero zero, right? That's a really long cross dissolve, All right? So whatever you want to do for that one. Okay, last thing. Thing number three and then we're done all right text so what the other part of this exercise is you might have to go back to canvas look up your worksheet and I want you to identify at least 12 shots so this one I'm gonna put text in and I'm gonna I'm gonna call this one what type of shot is this S symmetrical good it's also a wide so you might need to use one to two to three, maybe even four turns. So here's what I'm gonna do for my text. Text is right here, this little T button. Y'all see that one? Let's all try it. Find the T. Everyone do it. I don't care where you're at. You can, you can always change it, delete it. Come on, Israel. You wanna do it, All right. So if I click on my T right here, I'm gonna click right here on the bottom third, somewhere around here. I click right there and I can start typing. Oh, I might want to think for a second. There you go. And I'm going to type symmetrical wide shot. I think there's two M's in symmetrical. Wide two shot. Look at that. Even better. Now, is it okay if you like miss something like the two shot? Yes. But good pointing out. Now, problem number one with my text. What's wrong with my text? It's white, it's hard to read. I don't like the font, right? I don't like blah, blah, blah. So how do you change stuff on the text? So notice when I started typing my, with my text tool, I gave me a, a new track. It made a new thing in that track, this little pink thing. That's my text. So it treats your text like a clip, right? Let's do it. Yeah, wherever you want. There you go. All right. So here's how to change your fonts and your colors. Double click on your little box down here. Double click. What that does is, is it brings your text up here. So here is where I make all my changes. I'm gonna make sure my scrub is over it so I can see my changes. And if I go up here to, sorry effect controls down below it has everything I need so here's my source text so I can change the font so if I wanted to change it to 
I don't know, Rockwell. Oops, if it's not selected. Double click it and select it, right? And then I can zoom in here. I'm gonna change it to, what did I say, Rockwell? Whatever, Rockwell, boom. Maybe I'll make it a little bolder, bold. Uh, and then I can change, I can change a whole bunch of other parameters, but like most of you want to change the color, right? So if you wanted to change the color, I'm going to go fill. I'll make it yellow ish. We'll go like that. Hit okay. Now it's yellow stroke stroke is Adobe's word for outline. Why doesn't Adobe just use outline? I don't know, but stroke is Adobe's word for outline. Click on stroke. And if you really want to make sure your font always shows up, have a contrasting outline to your color, right? So, and then I can change the weight here, make it thicker or smaller. And I can go back to my arrow and now I have a nice identifiable text. I can move it around if I wanted to, all that stuff. There you go. Now, do I have to do that every single time? Class? No, once I get a, a look I like, computers are very good at duplicating things. So I use my magic little handy dandy convenient cut and paste. So I hit command C, I go over here, I hit command V, oops, I have to do one more thing. Remember how we have this left one that designates what comes in? The right one designates where I can paste things. So notice how V2 doesn't have a blue line on it. So that now it has a blue line on it. When I hit paste, take you off. Paste, there we go. So the one on the right, this blue designator on the light, right? I forget what, exactly what they call it. It's the toggle track, what are they saying? It's the basically where the functions occur, right? So if you don't wanna paste it and overwrite everything, you have to select the blue dot or the blue square to be up here, okay? That way I can just copy and paste it. So now, I don't have to do the font and the color and all that stuff again. I can just do, I can just type in extreme wide, high angle. Extreme wide, high angle. Boom, booyah. So. And I'm gonna go through and identify every shot. So this is a panning, panning mid shot, right? So again, I'm just gonna take this, copy, paste, and call it panning mid shot, P-A-N-N-I-N-G, and then mid shot. Do I have to put normal angle? No. If it's normal angle, don't even bother mentioning it. Panning mid shot. Normal is consi considered obvious. So you're gonna go through and identify every shot or at least 12 shots if you use more than 12 um, with the music. All right, did I show you everything you guys need to know? Yes, all right. So I just showed you the basic cross dissolve transition. For your silent short, I'll show you other transitions. Um, I showed you how to manipulate text and I showed you how to actually mess with the timing. That's the slip tool. That's the slip and the slide tool right here. So you got text, it's the T button. Slip, that lets you time stuff uh, to music. And then don't forget to go back to your arrow. And then transition is, you have to click on the edge for transition. I don't know if I made that clear. If you click on the clip, you can't apply default transition. You get way more options. So you have to be on the edge of it to apply the default transition. To change the duration, double click on it. All right. So you're gonna have the rest of the period. We're out of here at 12.40. So try to get as far as you can right now. Friday, we're gonna review and work again. Tuesday, we'll talk about cleaning it up. We're actually gonna do two exports. You're actually gonna export one with text and one without text. Don't worry, I'll show you how to do all that too. Right? Um, so just remember, this is what we're going for. 12 shots, timing. Uh, there's timing to action and there's timing, to mute, timing the cuts and timing the action has a good feel for the campus and you're identifying the correct shots. That's what I'm grading you on.